Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Millie, and on behalf of Fujitsu marketing team, I would like to welcome you all to the Fujitsu and Commvault webinar. We will wait for a minute for all the attendees to join. We will start the webinar shortly. As you know, this webinar is about how to modernize your data management with hyperscale appliances from Fujitsu and Commvault. We will talk about how build your own is yesterday and how data protection works today. The speakers are John Stadden from Fujitsu's EMEA's Mission Critical Data Center and Nizar El Farah, the Regional Alliances Lead from Commvault. Once again, thank you all for registering and attending with us. Let me share some information for the attendees. You can ask your questions in the chat section in the GoToWebinar panel. This session is recorded and the recording will be shared with you after the webinar. We have a survey at the end of this webinar and we encourage you to provide your feedback. We will start the webinar now with Nizar, which will then be continued by John. And at the end of the webinar, we will open the lines for Q&A section. Over to Nizar. Thank you, Millie. Um, it's uh, obviously a, a great opportunity for us uh, as Commvault and Fujitsu to talk about our alliance and the uh, uh, modernization that we have embarked on jointly to uh, assist our prospects and customers with their data protection and data management. So with that, uh, let's kind of take a look at uh, what is happening around us, right? We're embarking on a digital transformation journey. Uh, we're realizing that the workloads are evolving and customer requirements are becoming significantly more demanding and advanced. Business uptime is definitely a critical component, right? And downtime translates immediately into uh, lost revenue for our prospects and customers. As a result, modern data management is definitely a very key pillar in this equation and an essential component to provide smooth business operations both in the data center and outside. So in an on-premise environment and in the cloud effectively. Today, we will talk about how Commvault and Fujitsu can help you with this by highlighting this new paradigm shift in data management where we're helping in this modernization based on hyper-converged infrastructure. Okay, so uh, looking at some market trends and statistics, we basically can take a closer look at how those are impacting us. Basically, we've got, uh, as we're embarking on this digital transformation, this theme is surely becoming a core strategy and a pathway for many businesses. Essentially, this data is at the heart of each and every business. And as such, businesses are becoming ever so dependent on the right technology to power their data and to get value out of it 
to keep their businesses running and to grow that business with that fuel, that, that data that's fueling it and fueling its growth. The key trends that we see around us revolve around effectively moving to the cloud. So 72% of all the infrastructure spent is being spent on workloads being moved to the cloud, be it public or private. Infrastructure modernization, almost 90% of all on-premise storage spending is shifting to hyper-converged and web-scale infrastructure using commoditized hardware. And last but not least, analytics, data analytics, right? The businesses are spending substantial money to understand the trends, the consumer trends, the uh, internet trends, uh, the geopolitical uh, trends that are surrounding uh, the consumers. And as a result, this is mandating and changing the landscape by introducing the need for more infrastructure and applications combined. So let's basically take a quick snapshot at what we, Convault and Fujitsu, are doing uh, in, in this space. And obviously, for us to be credible, we're looking at industry validation. So the industry validation and the accolades is typically a testament to the value, the vision, and the execution that vendors bring to the table. And that's what makes you, Mr. Customer, take us seriously. Commvault and Fujitsu have maintained their leadership in the market, and the Gartner Magic Quadrant is a clear indication of that. Not only do we have a strong execution engine with Fujitsu, but we also have the most comprehensive vision to serve the customer needs. A closer look at the Magic Quadrant reveals that the vendor measurements are done based on execution and vision. A more complete vision from the vendor translates into the vendor's ability in addressing the customer needs and requirements yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Essentially, the customer realizes, it's essential that the customers realize that not only does every vendor have a roadmap vision, but that that roadmap works well for them. A disjointed, non-cohesive vendor vision translates into integration problems and manifests itself into unmanageable data sprawl with significant, significantly higher spend. So, with the globalization around us impacting every aspect of our lives in terms of cross-border business transactions, mergers and acquisitions, shifting workforces, and a lot more, the IT landscape is changing, and it's changing actually substantially. This comes with its own set of problems and needs. Ultimately, this is driving stringent requirements in terms of the need for stricter SLAs support for new business applications, new workloads, and new operating environments, as well as the need for new underlying infrastructure to host them. The need for governance, auditability, data discovery is also on the rise, as the global impact is much more far-reaching and has a global reach and impact. Problems also arise due to those requirements, such as, such as exponential growth in the storage, data sprawl is also becoming uh, prevalent, and customers and prospects alike are becoming prone to cyber attacks. Based on the IT readiness survey conducted in 2017, 50% of the customers surveyed said that they needed better data collection and management to be able to cope with these increasing requirements. So how can we help? Let's switch gears and look at this 15-minute video and pay attention to the statistics because that's what's going to be relevant to you.
so we hope we enjoyed this video and uh, let's look at what some of the key statistics that jumped out uh, at, at all of us uh, based on what we saw. So it showed us stats that were an outcome of an IDC study that showed how Commonwealth Fujitsu helped circa of 700 customers in their transformation journey. The feedback showed improved recovery, less complexity, better time savings, lower IT spend, and increased governance. And from a data recovery point of view, customers stated that they're seeing 58% faster recovery. Now, one key takeaway, in addition to what we saw in the video and those stats that we've repeated, which we will be sharing with you at the end of this uh, webinar, is that the customer satisfaction rate is fairly high. So a lot of our customers are experiencing extremely good response time, time to resolution, both from a hardware and from a software perspective. So the average in the industry being 85%, we're coming in at 98%. And this is actually an industry-dependent metric. So the infrastructure is evolving, right? We've kind of alluded to that earlier on. Business challenges are there, and they're increasing. Budgets continue to be a constraint uh, for customers, right? So despite the fact that they need to spend more, they can't always get whatever they ask for. There's more workloads that are popping up due to the nature of the businesses and the requirements that are increasing. And lines of business owners are also increasing their demands when it comes to what they need to do and how fast they need to do it by. Infrastructure is also evolving, right? So the usual data and equipment residing in the data center is no longer just the case, right? You have data that resides on-prem, you have data that resides in the cloud, you have data that resides with service providers, some that's even hosted and run as a service, and you've got a, a, a substantial amount of the workforce that's constantly on the run. So they're transacting from their laptops, they're transacting from their mobiles. So with that, you basically have to look at an environment, a platform that can provide you with the ability to manage and protect your data, whether it's virtual or physical or in the cloud, from a backup and, uh, and uh, backup and uh, recovery perspective, from a search and discovery point of view, from an information management and governance, and whether that data resides on-prem or off-prem or on endpoints. And of course, as we stated earlier, that data comes in different shapes and forms. So that data could be structured, it could be unstructured, it could be big data, and some of it could even go to the extent of being medical data that is pertinent to, uh, to a user or to an entity that's hosting some of that data. All of those capabilities are handled and managed in a unified manner using the Commvault data platform, where effectively it resides on a virtual repository. This is where the Fujitsu Commvault cooperation come in. It's all indexed using an intelligent metadata index, and it gives you, Mr. Customer, the ability to operate and manage that environment. So if we look at the competitive landscape, if we look to see what we are offering versus what the traditional players are offering in this space. So we stated earlier that workloads are increasing, requirements are becoming a lot more stringent. And as a result, when you look at the classical vendors, the Dell EMCs and the Veritas and IBMs of the world, you'll see that they do give you 
the point solutions that are required to address your needs from a protection and a recovery from a governance from a mobility protection and uh, management and operations however those are all for the most part disjoint solutions that are integrated and glued together and tested in a in a fairly um, uh, you know small environment right T typically tested in engineering labs uh, when you're doing integration and regression testing so ultimately customer environments are not always simulated as a result it becomes an integration issue when you know the solution is deployed or, or those solutions are deployed at a customer environment so when you compare that to the Commvault Fujitsu offering it's one piece of software running on one piece of hardware seamlessly integrated to provide that capability with for data protection for governance and information management for mobile protection of your endpoint devices your laptops and all seamlessly managed and operated from that GUI. Now if we switch gears and look at some of the newer players that are coming into the uh, into the equation, into the mix, the likes of Rubrik, Cohesity, Veeam to some extent, which is considered a, um, uh, a newer entrant into that space. They might have sexy, attractive solutions that, on the surface, might uh, appear to be addressing your requirements. However, that's that's only probably solving 50 to 60 percent of uh, your environmental needs of of your data, right? So the likes of Rubrik and Cohesity have, and and Veeam to that to that matter, uh, all have solutions that are predominantly focused on the virtual environment. So that leaves you, Mr. Customer, exposed when it comes to the other pieces of the equation that are also required, if not now, at a later point in time, when it comes to information governance, endpoint protection, and ultimately the management of, of all of that data in a seamless manner. So, in essence, the solutions that we're providing together with Fujitsu, Commvault and Fujitsu, definitely is an enterprise-ready solution that addresses customers' needs today and tomorrow. With that, I turn it over to my colleague, John. Thank you, Nizar. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John, John Stadden, uh, as Millie mentioned. Um, I'm part of the Fujitsu uh, EMEA Center of Competence, uh, mainly focused on uh, the uh, Mission Critical Data Center product. So that introduction was really to help me understand if I have control or not. Let me try once more to move on. Oriana, could you give me uh okay. Thank you. So as uh Nizar mentioned, um you know there's been a huge change in the the, the data management landscape in the the last few years. Uh previously uh you know the majority of data was kept in the data center and the only time it left was uh either on a business continuity type solution where it was replicated or a disaster recovery type solution where uh, tapes were perhaps taken off site for storage. Today, I think you all know because you all interact with uh, the internet and the world outside that uh, things have changed significantly. Uh, we're seeing perhaps only 40% of the data is resident inside the data center. And we're seeing, you know, uh, software as a service type uh, solutions, perhaps Office 365, for example. Um, you may have some cloud deployments out there, virtual machines and data that are sitting in the cloud. Uh, and it's not unusual for, for those to be backed up back on site, for example, back into the data center. 
uh, and, and somehow you have to manage that. And even for the SaaS, there is some requirement, for example, with Office 365 to, to protect your data. That doesn't always come uh, from the Microsoft Cloud. Um, so there are, there are customers out there who are running a SaaS Office 365, but they're still having to back up the data inside their data center. And of course, this mobile data, a lot of, uh, if you're part of a company that has a mobile scheme, uh, there's a lot of data that's sitting <clears throat> on your phone, email, files. Uh, for example, in Fujitsu, our phones are covered by a, uh, a corporate policy. Um, the data is backed up, but uh, also the data can be wiped. If, for example, I was to leave Fujitsu, um, they could wipe my phone <laughs> remotely. So there's, uh, there's that aspect as well. And of course, uh, the traditional uh, distributed data with, the, with all the endpoints. And besides that, there's internet data. What do we do with all the internet data that's out there? So we've got more data, more workloads, more locations. Every person with a mobile or a laptop connected to the internet somehow needs, uh, needs management. And of course, this has led to a uh, kind of an exponential increase in the complexity of, of how, how that data is managed. Okay, I do apologize if uh, the slides are a little slow transitioning. The, uh, the laptop is in Portugal where we're presenting from at the moment. Okay, there we go. So just to reiterate uh, one of Nizar's uh, key comments uh, about the value of, of Commvault and Simpana and the, uh, the, the unified data management approach uh, and the ability to not have just point solutions. Uh, so Commvault, um, you know, from a backup and recovery perspective, you know, we're talking about the physical systems, the applications, the middleware, the groupware, you know, snapshots, clones, uh, the endpoint backups. So that's covered by Commvault. Uh, archiving, which for a lot of uh, solutions is a, is a separate solution. So this could be email archiving, uh, file archiving. Uh, we have customers even today who are still just investigating uh, how to archive files from, from their filers. And of course, SharePoint. SharePoint's growing enormously in uh, nearly every company. Uh, your virtual environment, this again has grown significantly. Uh, database, uh, if you're running SAP, uh, there's significant archiving from some of those systems. Uh, and again, all of this is handled by uh, a single application, Commvault. Uh, moving on, replication. So if we want to replicate data to another site or the, the operational, the backup and the archive data, uh, again, a single solution within Commvault can manage that. Indexing, so you have quick access. Uh, reporting, so I, I, you can't underestimate the reporting. Actually, you know, once you automate all of this uh, activity, um, you really need to know where your uh, data is, is located and what's happening, what the trends are, where what's growing, uh, what's filling up. If you see in the middle here, uh, here, uh, where we have the GUI, the policy, sec security, scheduling, classification, and cataloging, and the data management in terms of compressing, encrypting, deduplication, and media management. This is managed across all of these, uh, these data management um, kind of pillars. And on top of all of that, uh, Commvault can manage the data deduplication. So moving on. Yeah, the other point that uh, Nizar made about the point solutions, uh, that there's no data centers out there today that are just 
hyperconverged or just in the cloud. Uh, there's still a huge legacy of, of data, uh, applications, devices, operating systems, virtual environments. Um, besides the, the, the newer Amazon Azure, the cloud-based type solutions. So again, you know, if, uh, if, you, if you want to minimize complexity, uh, you know, ha investing in a solution that, that can address all of these requirements uh, is, is going to make your data management team's life uh, so, so much easier. And as you can see at the bottom, this uh, Commvault has global coverage because it's a global company and it uh, has perhaps the best uh, support in the industry across the different applications. So moving on, this is just an example of, of again, of that previous slide where it's just an example of that one GUI. So this is a single GUI. Uh, you can see on the panel, the blue panel on the left, uh, you can dig down into your system uh, in great detail. There's a lot of summarized information there that's very useful. Um, and it's a, it's a unique uh, value add from Commvault. So moving on to uh, how the hardware infrastructure is, is changing. Um, you know, uh, appliances are kind of not old today, but they're, they're certainly installed in many, many customers. Um, but there's still customers out there that are building their own building their own infrastructure to protect and manage their data. And as you can see, the, the picture on the right is, is very complicated to the picture on the left. And the disaster recovery, your business continuity, your recovery point uh, objectives, your recovery time objectives, uh, they're all within uh, this environment. Uh, so you can manage it in the appliance or you can manage a, a sprawling infrastructure of different point solutions um, and try and uh, try and meet those objectives or define those objectives uh, on your own. Um, and given the situation where companies are trying to reduce their cost in data management, or if they're going to miss, uh, you know, their budgetary constraints. Um, you know, you have this situation where the complexity is actually going to introduce situations where data will be lost, the business will be impacted. But by then, it's uh, it's it's going to be a little too late, and uh, the loss of the business will already have occurred. So, if we look at the uh, the typical traditional appliance that's um, installed in most customers today. Uh, we would call that a kind of a scale-up architecture. This is one where we have a single controller or a pair of controllers. And, um, you know, we size it for performance and capacity on day one. And then next year, uh, we find that we actually didn't understand our growth rates correctly and we increase the capacity again, and so on. You know, the following year, we we realize that we're well behind the curve and we add uh, more capacity. And then you reach a point where either the system itself has run out of capacity and you need to take it down and either do uh, controller upgrades perhaps, uh, or if it's out of warranty and out of maintenance, it's a forklift removal. Uh, and potentially, you know, you have a migration project on your hands of hundreds of terabytes of deduped or compressed type data, which is not a simple um, activity to 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 get away from. And uh, just to give you an example of how that might look in a product, so uh, our previous, well, previous and current uh, scale-up appliance with Commvault is the CS200. Uh, again, it's based on Fujitsu hardware. Uh, and both Fujitsu and Commvault have worked to integrate 
um, the software into an appliance. Um, so we have the software, we manage the licenses, and we cover backup, dedupe, and archiving with, with a single appliance. Um, it takes about 30 minutes to install. So it's a very um, nice appliance from a, an Im implementation perspective. It supports uh, the majority of uh, Commvault functionality. Um, so the dedupe is there. We support all of the uh, operating systems. Uh, we can replicate to another uh, CS200. And, and the licensing can be flexible in terms of uh, front end or back end type capacity or even virtual machine or agent based. Um, and and we've we found this to be very popular with, with a lot of customers. Uh, how does that differ from hyperscale? So hyperscale is a little bit like hyperconverged in the way that it scales by just adding nodes. So you, you buy a set of nodes and you can scale performance and capacity by adding another set of nodes. So that's very different to the scale up approach where your, your performance is dictated by your first controller purchase. So by, by adding more nodes, not only am I getting more capacity, I'm getting more performance as well. Okay, and uh, I'll show you on the next slide how uh, when we do a refresh, uh, we don't have to do a forklift uh, excessive data migration. And it can all be done online. So let me move on to that slide. All right, this is just a stopgap slide to say introducing the hyperscale appliance. So here we go. We have uh, on the left here, we have what the hardware uh, should look like although I believe the faceplate may have changed. Uh, it comes in either a one or two U appliance, um, and it comes in three node blocks. And, and if you're familiar with hyperconverged um, storage, you know that store, uh, the, the data is spread across nodes. So we, we have it spread across nodes for availability as well as performance. And uh, if you look at the capacities, um, so it starts in a 29 terabyte usable, 43, 58, 87, and uh, more recently, the 174 terabyte and 261 terabyte um, uh, blocks have been launched. Uh, and as you can see in red here, that is linked to the 2U appliance. So that would be uh, 6U, and you would have 261 terabytes of backup and archiving capacity. The support model is a global parts replacement, next business day or four hour response time. Um, and that is provided by a single number, telephone number support with Commvault. Um, we followed the same approach as with the CS200. Uh, it's very simple to install. Again, uh, we aim for less than 30 minutes to install. Um, the three nodes is a starting point, so it's it's modular and scales, I believe, right now up to nine nodes, which puts us in uh, approaching a petabyte of uh, capacity. Um, and again, because of the no single point of failure in the hyperconverged approach, um, we can lose a node and continue continue working. Uh, if you lost a controller on a traditional uh, backup device, uh, you would be heavily impacted, uh, perhaps in availability, uh, and most definitely in uh, performance. Okay, moving on. So this this slide's quite interesting because it uh, it highlights that uh, you can actually mix the generations. So following on from you know, a software defined approach, uh, we can actually uh, have generation one, generation two, generation three in the same uh, data management um, cluster, if you like. 
Um, as, as mentioned on the right here, uh, we grow in blocks of three. So you, you don't just add one node, you add another block of three and it's automatically integrated into the, uh, the environment. Um, and uh, data will be spread further across uh, the different nodes. As you can see, that, uh, that allows for non-disruptive upgrades. Okay, so you don't have to take this down. This also shows you that uh, on the bottom right here of the diagram here, that we can retire non-disruptively. So that, that's very key. If you've ever done a huge data migration off of a data deduplication appliance, uh, this is a long and complicated process. Um, and, and now we've turned this into something that you don't have to worry about anymore. You just bring your new nodes in and the data will be migrated automatically. So the key takeaways here, you know, the, and I think one thing I forgot to mention is that even though uh, we have this hyperscale appliance, it is based on a reference architecture. So it can be applied to different scenarios. So if you wanted to build, you know, a hundred petabyte type solution, uh, we can use the reference architecture and do just that. But today, in terms of an appliance, uh, we're, 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 I, I won't say we're restricted, but since it's a new product, we've been introducing the, uh, the new functionality um, over time since it was first announced. So the, uh, those larger capacities I mentioned just now, um, they were launched, I think, in October last year. So that was the second iteration of the of the appliance was was introduced with the higher capacity. So I expect we'll be seeing more of that. We'll be seeing larger nodes, and um, uh, we'll be seeing probably larger clusters. But what that means on the classic software solution, where you take your back end or you take your uh, your multiple point solutions and try and integrate it, and you have to manage all of your media agencies and all of the different licensing across the different solutions, including having to uh, size that. Um, you know, you have the, the, the complexity then of managing support across the different solutions as well. On the hyperscale approach, you know, it's, it's very s simple. We have a single part number uh, that you purchase, so there's no two or three vendors or you know, managing different SLAs across different products. So it's a single part number. Uh, as I mentioned, two levels of support. It installs in less than 30 minutes. There's a single GUI to manage all of the complexity, uh, the backup, the archiving, the replication, um, the cloud, you know, that's, that's all in a single interface. Uh, some additional points here, centralized patch management. Um, you don't have multiple contracts and there's no multiple vendors. So it's a, a single vendor approach that gives you the full breadth of data management across the data center. And uh, it's available from both Fujitsu or Commvault, which uh, whichever you'd prefer to work with. And we work together anyway on, on the background on most projects. Uh, so you can't get away from us. <laughs> yeah, you'll be dealing with one or, or both of us. So just uh, last comment here. Um, you know, the Fujitsu quality aspect of uh, Japanese and German engineering, um, and I believe uh, Commvault uh, software engineering as well is uh, well recognized uh, for its high quality. So I think uh, what I'll do now is uh, I'll thank you for listening to me and I'll pass back to uh, Millie. And I believe we will be taking some questions now. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, John and Nizar, for sharing your insights on the evolution of distributed data and how to address the complexities that arise from there. 
We will now open the lines to answer your questions. If you have any questions, please enter them in the chat section of the GoToWebinar panel, as you have been advised at the beginning of the session. After the webinar has ended, you will see a survey on your screen. So please take a moment to answer it so we can improve our webinars in the future. Okay, we have received some questions via the chat panel during the course of the webinar. We will now move on to answering the questions. Uh, the audience can continue to write down your queries if you have any and submit through your chat panel. So one of the UAE partners are asking, what is the licensing policy on the Commvault Fujitsu hyperscale appliance? Uh, would the speakers be able to answer this question? Maybe Mr. Nizar? Uh, yes, sure. Thank you, Millie. Uh, and, and this is actually a very good question from, uh, from the partner community. Um, essentially, as John was explaining, the, uh, the hyperscale appliance comes in one, uh, one part number, one SKU. Uh, as a result, it's, uh, from a licensing point of view, it is licensed based on the back-end capacity of that appliance. Now, that back-end capacity or back-end terabyte uh, includes all of that functionality that we've uh, highlighted in the presentation in terms of the ability to back up physical uh, environments, virtual environments, back up to the cloud, um, uh, archive, uh, mailbox uh, capabilities, and endpoint protection. Now, uh, there are a few additional SKUs that a customer might be interested in, which would require uh, a few more additions to, to the license. Uh, but in essence, that back-end terabyte uh, model is a fairly comprehensive uh, model that includes all of that functionality within. Sounds good. There, by the way, there is, there is, from a licensing point of view, uh, there's also uh, a, a simple, a fairly simple licensing scheme that uh, Commvault Fujitsu use uh, to license uh, an environment that uh, a customer might have by simply taking a few questions uh, in terms of the number of physical sockets uh, on, a, on a hypervisor, uh, the number of uh, physical systems that need to be protected, and, uh, and, and simply uh, we, we can generate uh, a quote based on that, build a BOQ based on that. Okay. So if, they, if they have any questions, of course, your email IDs of the speakers are there on the presentation, and you can refer back to them. Sure. I think we have another question now. Uh, please clarify how support will be provided for hyperscale appliances bought from Fujitsu. John, would you like to answer this question, please? Sure. Um, my, my understanding is, is that uh, there's one support number and first level support is delivered through Commvault. Okay. That's, I mean, it's as simple as that, sorry. <laughs> If I was a bit abrupt. <laughs> yeah. There is another question. What's the difference between purpose-built backup appliance and an integrated backup appliance? I, I can take that. Um, so yeah, basically, you. a purpose-built backup appliance, effectively, all, the, all, all it is is a deduplication engine. It's a target appliance it has um, a deduplication engine. So the server, uh, typically uh, a standalone server for the most part, in some cases it's a redundant server with disks uh, attached to it on the back end. So it's, it's more of a scale-up type appliance without the software intelligence layer. So that software intelligence layer has to be uh, procured separately, it has to be bought separately. Uh, for the appliance to actually work, for it to actually uh, um, write to the appliance. An integrated appliance, on the other hand, is uh, a, a full solution, right, where you've got the uh, software, the backup software, as well as the hardware infrastructure, the servers and the disks, all within that uh, form factor. So it's, it's a turnkey solution. Essentially, the difference between a, a purpose-built and an integrated is that one requires the engine to drive it, 
right, which is the backup software, whereas the other one comes with all the uh, bells and whistles attached to it. Now, taking that a bit further and uh, uh, elaborating on the hyperscale appliance, which John described, uh, it basically uh, takes that concept of hyper-converged and applies it to secondary storage and to uh, the backup uh, environment with the software embedded uh, into it as well. Yeah, sounds like a very neat plan. We have another question. What is the scalability of the hyperscale appliance? How far does the appliance scale? Uh, you want me to answer that, Millie? Yeah, please. Actually, uh, before we move on to that question, I, I, would, I was just going to add to Nizar's answer. <clears throat> If, uh, if you wanted examples of the, the backup appliance versus integrated, uh, we have products called CSA 800. This is a, uh, a backup appliance. And we also have the, the CS 8000 high-end, uh, which again is, is just a, a hardware dedupe type engine um, without any software. Uh, in terms of the scale, scalability, um, <clears throat> I did mention on one of the slides uh, we can go up to about 270 terabytes now in, in a block uh, of three nodes. And uh, right now, I think we're supporting nine, uh, nine nodes altogether. So that's, uh, that's nearly, I guess, eight, 800 terabytes of, uh, and I say usable, uh, that excludes um, compression and dedupe type features that are within Commvault. Excellent. Okay. So we'll wait, yeah, we'll wait for half a minute for more questions to come in. And uh, at the end of that time, if we don't receive any more questions, then we will close the webinar. Uh, we have another question that has come in. At a high level, can you elaborate how the high availability aspect of this appliance is designed? As in, what is the node failure disruption which it would allow for given that the minimum node number is three? Who would like to can take this repeat? up? Yeah. Can you repeat it? At a high level, can you elaborate how the high availability aspect of this appliance is designed? It's written eight A. I I think it that means high availability. Uh, as in, what sure. is the node failure disruption which it would allow for, given that the minimum node number is three? Okay, uh, I I could start off and maybe John, if you want to add to this. So the the appliance, the hyperscale appliance, comes in a minimum of three nodes, right? So that redundancy, uh, redundancy is built into those three nodes by using erasure coding. Uh, what erasure coding does is that it gives, and obviously there's different erasure coding schemes. I believe this one is four plus two. So from a uh, parity point of view, it's writing multiple copies of the blocks on the different nodes. So in essence, a, uh, that, that's why obviously there's uh, a difference between the raw capacity and the usable capacity. The usable capacity typically comes in at around 66, 66 to 67 percent of the uh, um, of the raw capacity that is uh, that uh, the appliance has based on those internal disks that are in it. So if a node fails, obviously based on that erasure coding, you can continue to run. Right, so it's four plus two. So one node will, will can, can you can sustain a failure of a node, and the other two nodes will run, while uh, you're using the erasure coding to actually uh, rebuild the third one once it's replaced. And as you add more nodes into the cluster, your level of redundancy improves. Okay, John, is there anything you want to add to that? Well, uh, just what what Nizar said, uh, in the three node uh, block, you can lose a single node and continue. But obviously, as you get up to uh, nine nodes, um, you could lose up to uh, uh, two nodes. 
without losing anything. Interesting. If you remember, there was a six plus two uh, uh, erasure coding model, which means that uh, if you have enough nodes, you can, uh, as Nizar mentioned, you can you you have higher availability. Okay. The next question is: Inline dedupe supported? Yes. So the duplication that we do is in line. Uh, there is a duplication that happens that can be uh, configured to happen on the source, on the client, and uh, that happens on the destination. The destination being the media agent. So, yeah. so absolutely yes. Except that I guess the the terminology that's being referred to here with inline deduplication typically resembles um, a purpose-built backup appliance, right? Whereas with an integrated solution, the duplication actually happens on the integrated appliance. Okay. We are waiting for, you know, a minute more in case of any questions. If not, we will close the webinar. Where at the end of the session, you will have a survey, um, and we request you to please take the time to provide your feedback. We have another question coming in. What about the compression ratio? Any comments? What about the compression ratio? Uh, well, the compression. To be honest, I I don't uh, have a, a figure to to uh, to share. But typically, the compression and deduplication are calculated when uh, we know what the front end capacity is, what the application type, the data type is, whether it's structured or unstructured, if it's uh, you know file based data or object uh, data, and the retention that gets applied. So based on that, we can put that into the into our deduplication calculator and determine what the uh, uh, dedupe and compression would would uh, would be uh, on the disk target once that data is stored. So, look, bottom line is that there's multiple factors that go into determining the compression and deduplication. Retention being one of them, type of data, change rate, uh, as well as uh, uh, as well as the fact that we can turn on global deduplication, right? So there are solutions out there that aren't that don't support global deduplication. Uh, as, a, as as such, obviously you will have uh, lower compression and lower deduplication. Whereas with global deduplication, you're leveraging uh, the duplication that happens across multiple media agents, and as a result, you will achieve a higher compression and deduplication. So in, in some environments, we've seen the duplication that reaches up to 95%. Thank you, Nizar. I think there are no more questions. Okay. In this case, since we have no more questions, We will close the webinar now. Thank you all for attending. You will receive an email with a link to this recording, the session which was just recorded. Thank you. Thanks, Malik. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.